and don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. <laughs> Got it? It was September 29th, 1998. The fan favorite Leon Kennedy just arrived at Raccoon City, not realizing that this will be his first and last day as a police officer. To his surprise, once arriving, the city was infested with zombies and monsters. The logical conclusion would be to find a safe haven within the city, that being the Raccoon City Police Department. Though soon arriving, we encountered this gentleman. Uh, oh man. Who, who are you? Oh, you must be the new guy. Leon. Sorry, but it looks like your party has been cancelled. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving zombies in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. They risked their lives to reveal the truth, but no one believed them. Not long after that, all this started to happen. Uh, uh. Hang in there. Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But just go. Fine. Though brief was our conversation with him, we find out that this officer here would be one of the last survivors within the precinct, which later we find out that this unsung hero would be Officer Marvin Branagh, the would-be superior to Leon and the person responsible for helping countless lives in the midst of the Raccoon City outbreak, and would eventually be infected himself, turning into one of the undead. So without any further ado, let's begin the story of Marvin Branagh. Hey, Marvin. Ah! To get you to a hospital right now. No, no, I uh, save yourself. Though not much is known about Marvin Brownell's life prior to his major role in the middle of the T virus outbreak, the closest thing we have as a history to his character is his original and major role in Resident Evil 1.5. Here, he would be one of the mainstay characters that would help and follow Leon in his journey in the would be Resident Evil 2, similar to how Ada accompanied Leon from place to place. Marvin would help the rookie officer throughout the game even later then adding another member to their small group, which would be an umbrella researcher named Linda. Though later we find out that this was the Resident Evil 1.5 version of Ada Wong, with the three covering the places of the RPD station, the sewers, and eventually making it to the umbrella secret lab. Though unfortunately along the way, Marvin would be injured by the early version of William Birkin, leaving Leon and Linda to help Marvin into one of the safe rooms inside the Umbrella Secret Lab, taking on the role that would be for either the injured Ada or infected Sherry Birkin in the finished version of Resident Evil 2. Another dilemma that Marvin and crew had to go through was finding a cure due to the infection that he had from William Birkin's attack. Leon and Linda would find this cure within the secret lab and save Marvin's life. Though unfortunately, this early version of Resident Evil 2 would be scrapped, removing the majority of Marvin's major role within this game, subsequently leaving him with a little screen time that we saw from the beginning of the original RA2. Uh, uh, hang in there. Though luckily for us, if we play the many different Resident Evil games that covered the events in late September 1998, we find out that they added a little bit more lore to his character, where he played a crucial role of maintaining order and helping those in need within the RPD. This was evident in Resident Evil Outbreak, and how Marvin and the remaining surviving officers were trying to figure out an escape route within the police station which at that moment was surrounded by zombies and monsters from the outside. This was only compounded with a lack of police officers within the station, with most of the force set outside in the midst of the outbreak, while martial law was declared, hoping to minimize the chaos from the T-virus spread, with many in the police force building lines to stop the advancements of hordes of zombies in the city. But to no avail, we see the end results right here.
Though safe at that moment, Marvin and his fellow officers were trying to figure out a plan to escape within the police station because the subsequent later intrusion of zombies in both the west and east side wings of the RPD would mean certain death for those still inside the building. To add to this, Chief Irons who we find out in Resident Evil 2 was cooped up inside of his office, having no care in the world on what was going on inside of his police station. To top that off, before he hid himself from everyone, he caused more panic and confusion among the police officers, which he gave them false information, scattering all weapons and ammo, disconnecting the communications to the outside of Raccoon City, and even started to hunt down any survivors left inside the RPD station. This insanity from the police chief would have Marvin assume the role as the leader of the precinct, which in the end would find the escape route within the main hall under the statue, and eventually helping the other survivors escape from the front gate even though surrounded by zombies, which in this version of storytelling for Marvin, this would be the point of his infection, opting to stay behind and letting his colleagues escape without him knowing full well that he would turn eventually. In a somber state, he would go back to the west side office, where later there he would be met with Leon Kennedy on his first day on the job. Just go! This story recon of Marvin Branagh comes from the perspective of the Resident Evil Outbreak series, and it was great to see how the events prior to Leon's arrival to the RPD connects to his first meeting with Marvin. But this was only one alternative to the events that ensued during that timeline, because if we played the original Resident Evil 2 and 3, and RE2 and 3 Remake, and even Darkseid Chronicles, there were some minor changes to how we encountered Marvin Branagh, and how he was infected with a T-Virus, which we can start with a recon count from Resident Evil 2 since we did play the clip earlier on his interaction with Leon. Uh, uh, fine. Here the majority of his role would be complete after that initial conversation because once leaving the west side office, we're unable to go back there after being locked, though later we're able to enter once again in the back side of the office. Here we encounter Marvin for the last time. Though at that moment, the T-Virus infection has finally run its course, turning Marvin into one of the strongest zombies we encounter in this game. Also as a quick side note, the interaction or conversation that Marvin would have will differ slightly, depending on which character we chose to play as, which we already heard the version of his conversation with Leon. But playing as Claire Redfield, Marvin would have a slightly different rendition to the information, and even the change in tone of his voice was very apparent. <laughs> Are you the only officer left in the building? Uh, who are you? Claire. Claire Redfield. I'm looking for my brother Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris. Jill Barry. Every Last Stars team member has disappeared. We should have listened to them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures. In a mansion located in the outskirts of this city, Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything, at the risk of their own lives, but no one believed them. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this keycard. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But... Just go. Okay. Just hang in there. I'll be back soon. The interpretation to the small changes between the two versions could be summed up with Claire's connection with the former STARS member Chris Redfield, and the fact that Claire's conversation with Marvin was actually the true canon of the storyline, with Claire's A scenario portion playing out, and Leon would be the B scenario side of things in the story of RE2. <laughs> I'll be back soon. Anyways, though Small was his role in this game, he gave us enough information on what was going on prior to Leon and Claire's arrival to the city. 
giving us tidbits of information on what happened during the events from Resident Evil 1 and how the remaining STARS team tried to warn the public about the T-Virus and Umbrella. And speaking of letting the public know about Umbrella, Jill Valentine was still the leading front in that area and opted to stay in Raccoon City. And while playing in the original Resident Evil 3, we get the chance to see Marvin unconscious within the West Side office. And to clarify some confusion as to why Leon or Claire never met Jill during this time, it was because Jill was there to see Marvin at that stay, one whole day prior to their arrival to the city. Uh. But besides that point, this minor cameo of Marvin in RE3 wasn't much of a significance to the overall plot of Jill's escape from the city. Because the major changes would come when we see the modern interpretation to his character in the remakes version of RE2 and RE3. With the story beat playing identically with some small changes, Leon and Claire would travel to Raccoon City, not knowing the area was infested with zombies and monsters. Their eventual destination again would have them reach the RPD station, which in contrast on how we met Marvin at the West Side office, here we're actually saved by him. Safe for now. Thanks, Marvin Brana. Leon Kennedy. There was another officer. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Here. <clears throat> I'm sure you did what you could, Leon. Though unfortunately, he would be the last surviving officer we'd see besides from what we saw from Elliot or maybe even Chief Irons. I'll be back soon. <sighs> Similar to the original RE2, we'll have a chance to listen to his current situation and how some small differences between his interaction with both Leon and Claire. With Leon's version, he's a bit more forward in his tone. But honestly, all you need to know is that this place will eat you alive if you aren't careful. Yeah, well, I was supposed to start last week, and I got a call to stay away. I wish I'd come here sooner. You're here now, Leon. That's all that matters. Okay, Lieutenant. I'm ready. Hopefully you'll be able to find a way out of this station. That officer you met earlier, Elliot. He thought this secret passageway might do the trick. This is good news. We can get you to a hospital. No, no, I am not the priority here. Lieutenant, I'm not just gonna leave you here. I'm giving you an order, rookie. You save yourself first. I'd come with you, but I'd just slow you down. Now, you'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Them. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out. Or you run. Got it? Yes, sir. With Claire, he seems a bit more sympathetic. Help! Help! Watch out! You all right? Yeah. You're safe. For now. Marvin Branagh. Thanks. Obviously someone taught you well. Yeah. I know how to take care of myself. Come on. <clears throat> There's a lot of theories. But all I know for sure is that this place is crawling with zombies. Yeah, you're telling me. Hey, hey, keep that on, just in case. I'm not gonna be around long. Once I find Chris, we're out of here. You really Chris's sister? Yeah. Why? Did you find something? He's on vacation. Europe, I think. <coughs> Left weeks ago. Vacation? That's, that's great news. Well, I've got more for you. Looks like there might be a way out through this secret passageway. Good. Hey. Hey, we should probably get you to a hospital. Oh, hold on. Forget about me. 
I can take care of myself. No, don't be ridiculous. You're gonna need some help. Listen, Claire. Save yourself. So you can see your brother again. <laughs> Good luck! Now, you probably need this. No, I'm not taking that. You're gonna... Shh. And be careful. If you see one of those things, no matter who they were, you can't hesitate. Take them out if you can. Or you run. And what I found interesting in the remix retelling of the conversation was the lack of information Marvin would give to Leon or Claire and the omission of the events that happened in Resident Evil 1 and the surviving stars team. Hang in there. Uh, uh. Another difference added to this when compared to the original Resident Evil 2 is that he will stay in the main hall of the RPD station. Unlike how he was in the west side office, here he'll stay on standby notifying us of any new events. So depending on which character we chose to play as, he'll call us and notify us of Leon or Claire's arrival at the side back entrance way to the RPD. Also same as his role from Resident Evil Outbreak, he would help us find a way to open the passage under the statue at the main hall. Though the contrasting point is in how he turned into a zombie, which we see him already turned inside of the main hall without any kind of pre-introduction to his infection of the T-Virus. In the remake's version, we hear a small mention on how Marvin's current status from Leon and Claire. Another retelling to Marvin's story in the remake was a recount of his infection, which remember he did gain his injury while helping his fellow officers escape from the RPD during Resident Evil Outbreak. In Resident Evil 3 Remake, he gets infected due to the already zombified Brad Vickers. Come on, man. Not you too. Sorry. Sorry. And what's great about this moment was a small hesitancy that Marvin had when he saw Brad in that state, referring back to his conversation with Leon and warning him not to hesitate like he did. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. Anyways, before we end this video, a couple of small details were mentioned about Marvin from the other Resident Evil games, which Marvin was the one setting up the office for Leon's first day on the job party, to some reports of Marvin wandering the halls of the RPD station after his infection, in hopes of still finding more survivors, though unsuccessful due to the amount of zombies breaking through the window of the precinct, and the presence of another monster lurking the halls, slashing anything on sight. Was that thing? Leaving him no choice but to hide inside the West Wing office, again recounting an alternative version to his final moments inside of the RPD station. Anyways, in the end, Marvin was a true hero, even though his screen time inside the game was very minimal. It was great to see him have more of a presence in Resident Evil Outbreak's games, showing how much of a hero he was during that outbreak. Anyways, what did you guys think about Marvin Branagh? And do you guys think he should have gotten more screen time in the remake? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoy the content, then please feel free to check this video right here. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll be back soon. Uh -huh.